Hello, and welcome to episode number three, and this is Ask Bobette. Hi. Um, I usually have to introduce them, so instead of saying much, I decided that I'm just going to wear some of these things here. So, how many times have you won the Bundesliga, this is the Bundesliga, plus um, Poco? Bundesliga I won eight times and yeah. Hogla I won seven times. And everybody knows what this is here. That's a gold medal. 2016, we'll be getting into that. These are just what she has here in Madrid. Champions League final last year, or two years ago. Two years ago. Um, let's just continue to take these off. Okay, and then of course we can't forget Do you want to explain this or? This is the original copy from the... 2007 when they won. The Cup Trophy, yes. And it's as heavy. It is, uh, yeah, the same. Replica. On the day. On the day. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have a new co-host here, Maxwell. He's going to join us. Um, so, how did you fall in love with football? Uh, I don't, don't know how, I just know that um, I really love um, what I do and love playing football and um, I did actually quite a lot uh, of sports as I was a kid. Uh, handball, gymnastics and whatever. Handballs for taller players were? I'm not that tall but I was not then. Do you think your gymnastics is the reason you're a little bit like more... <laughs> Two, two rocks, if this you is an angle, this is like the calf, this is circumference. You mean that's maybe a reason why it's so strong, you mean? Yeah, okay, let me go with that one. <laughs> okay, I can look at this. Um, maybe, I think it helped me to be really coordinated and something like this. Yeah. Okay. What was your first jersey you ever owned? Uh, my first jersey was from Jürgen Kliefman from FC Bayern München. Yeah. Mary Jo Pride there too mm -hmm. as well, hey? Um, what was the first game you ever went to? Um, I don't remember uh, who played, but I'm quite sure it was a cap game from Germany. What? How old? Do you remember? Mm, maybe 15, okay. 14. Mm. And that's crazy. Three years later, you would win your first. Mm. Not so bad. Um, when did you become aware of women's football and that you could have a career as a footballer? I think I start to realize that I really have a good chance to uh, live my dream. As I went to the boarding school to Leipzig, I was leaving my little hometown Oschatz. Um, How old were you? I was 15. Would you say that's a normal time for people to leave as a sport learner? I think for, for normal sport -learner. kids it's quite early, but um, if you want to achieve something in sport, um, you have to make this step. And I'm really thankful my parents uh, gave me the possibility. And also in Germany you can play with youth league, top men's or boys team until 15. Yes, exactly. I played uh, till 15 with, uh, with the boys in Oshatz. Okay. But then I had no team, no possibility to play around. So I went to Leipzig. Who was your footballing idol growing up? Mm, I think my idol in women football was always Renate Lingur. And I'm so blessed and honored um, that I could play with her for, I think, five or six years together. Um, before football, what did you want to do? I always wanted to become a wet. I, do you believe that you can tame a lion to be a pet? If you were a vet? I have friends. I'm not sure about this. That's my dream, to have a bunch of lions. A bunch, not only one, a bunch. Oh, you, they have to have brothers and sisters. Oh. How did it feel to get your first professional contract and, and how did that happen? So you were at two years at Leipzig school playing academy and then you got invited to go play in Potsdam. Yes, exactly. So it's like the 
the second league coach from Potsdam saw me and then, um, yeah, Ben Schröder uh, himself uh, called me. How's his voice? His voice is really deep. And, uh, and his I hands are like, this is one, I know I have smaller hands, but his hands are like two hands of mine. Yeah, yes, he's, I think how he looks like, it's also his uh, personality. I learned a lot big, from him. Big guy, big German. Yeah. Okay. When you met him first, you're kind of scared of him. <laughs> I went there for a week tryout. Oh, and you survived it? No. <laughs> that's why I didn't play Potsdam. I will say that's the reason why we had to run the first day I was out. I should have known Wolfsburg was going to be the same. Yeah. Okay, so that um, segue us right into Potsdam. Mm -hmm. So Potsdam, you kind of explained, a professional contract, you could also do school there, mm -hmm. um, but when you went, what were your expectations of for the team? I mean, you were 19 or 18? 17. I meant 17, folks. <laughs> <laughs> 17. Um, what were your expectations? At this point, you were in youth national teams? Uh, yeah, I was sometimes in youth national teams, but not really um, settled there. And yeah, to be honest, I didn't have so many expectations. Um, that was uh, but the best thing that could happen, I think, because um, I found out I played with the big time players in Potsdam. It was Nadine Angera, Ariane Hingst, um, Connie Plo Polers, and I played with all these players together, and it was like. Uh, uh, yeah, time. It was crazy, it was an amazing time. Um, okay, you won five Bundesliga titles and a Poco Cup mm -hmm. with Potsdam. Yeah. But before you joined the club, they had been struggling to win trophies. What do you think changed? And why were six out of those seven years so successful? Wow. Mm, I don't know. I think we just had a really good mixture of player. That young a player that was really hungry and uh, they wanted to achieve something. We had great experienced player, like I said. We had this coach that on one side drove us crazy, on the other side um, teached us a lot. So I think it was just a good mixture, a mix, mixture. Everything seemed to make sense. Yeah. Okay. How much did you know about the Women's Champions League the year it started? Mm -hmm. um, what were you told and what were you expecting? I did not know that this started. I mean, you just hear Champions League, but I didn't know that it started. You played the first ever Champions League yeah. final and won it? Yeah, we won it. Um, yeah. Where's, where's that trophy? This trophy is at home by my parents. They have the rest of my trophies. How many would you say that you have overall? Like if you had to go from everything combined, your total number? Because you get a trophy for every cap, right? A little... Exactly. Yeah. If you had to estimate. <sighs> I would say with the, with the cap trophies... Because you have over... How many caps did you have? 118. 118. So that's 118 trophies like this size in a box. Yeah, then you're plus when you get 100 and all the stuff, the cool stuff. Yeah, let's say if I would buy a house uh, later, maybe I should make an extra room to. That's the most cocky thing you've ever said. I'm proud of you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, sorry, back to the real question. Okay. 2010, you won it. What yeah. did you expect? Um, yeah, I mean, first of all, it was uh, a final. And in Madrid? In Madrid here, it was one of the greatest games I ever experienced. It was, yeah, a crazy final. I think that was the perfect first final for Champions League. Before, uh, before it was always UEFA Cup, I don't yeah. know if you know this, and it was always two games in the final, and it doesn't really felt like a final. So this was a great experience. Okay, um, on that day, did you have any special routine for the match day? Mm. Any superstitions? No, not really. Just like I have, have I, have my, I have my routines, but yeah, you have one superstition. Same. No. <laughs> you don't have to say what is it. I mean, yeah, I have some, but nobody knows it actually. So. Oh, no idea. <laughs> Awkward silence. <laughs> to the next one. <laughs> Was it? Last question. Was okay. it on Potsdam? Mm -hmm. um, was it always a plan for you to take a penalty in a shootout or did you volunteer at full time? Uh, no, I uh, like to take responsibility and um, 
I always want to take PKs because I think for me as a player it, it felt better to maybe miss the shot instead of uh, not shooting, you know? I don't know if it makes sense, but... Um, That's what I tell myself about my Everlast PK. I, I agree with you. Yeah. yeah, so for me it felt that always feels better and yeah, I like also to take responsibility. Uh, she took all, for example, the, when I was at the Euros in 2017, mm -hmm. you took all the penalties. Yeah. Impressive. Now you are 22. Mm -hmm. You have so far won a World Cup and what else? Uh, Euros. Champions League, Euros, and five or six Poco at 22. Mm, no, I'm not at 22. It's, it's 25. Yeah. Okay, and then you went to Frankfurt for two years, yeah. won a cup, and then you went on to the the Germany grades, not bias here, uh, Wolfsburg. Yeah. So what was, do you think, a difference between Wolfsburg and Potsdam? I think the most different was it like uh, that, yeah, it was maybe the most professional club um, I've yep. ever played. And Credit uh, to Ralph for that one. Yeah, and it is Ralph Kalaman built up something yeah, great there, I mm -hmm. think. And uh, also, I played with so many world class players together. I feel really blessed for this time there. Okay. What was your training, weekly training routine like? Let me tell you. You ran. Um, <laughs> can you tell us, let's say, can you tell us your favorite training drills? Training drill. Yeah. I liked, um, what's the way you, you kick the ball in the air and then you shoot. Auf Schießen. Auf Schießen. That Auf is Schießen. a fun German game. You don't play it very often, the, but the, when you the do. The foreigners never got this game. We played sometimes Germans against foreigners, and um, I think the Germans always won because you had the foreigner player just don't get the game really. What do you mean? You just chip the ball and shoot. Yeah, exactly. That's the game, but you never get it. We always won. Okay. Anyways, uh, my favorite game was like. like I don't know, I really like six against three, kind of small possession, okay. I really like. No, it's a little bit bigger egg, but yeah. Okay, you've played center back and full back. <laughs> what tips would you give to players who have to swap between those positions? Uh, swap, why swap? You can play both, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> why swap, there you go. Yeah, um, that, that uh, I think was one of the benefits of my career, I could play on every position in the back line. For example, she was brought here as a center back and now she's playing outside of left back. Exactly. And you always developed your left foot. Like you told me when you were with Sylvia Knight or mm -hmm. at the beginning, she said you're a great player, but she has no... Yeah, it was kind of uh, the early times in the national team. And uh, I, like I said, I played with big times players together and then Sylvia Knight was coming to me and said, listen, you train well, well, but I don't have really a space for you in the center right now. So the only position is three. To be honest, is, speaker. The only position is three is the left outside back. So I trained like an idiot my left feet, and uh, yeah, some months later I played I think five years on the left outside back for the national team. Hmm. Okay. Um, last question: Should the Wolfsburg team have won a Champions League? Why didn't they? Yeah, I think uh, we were always close. Two finals, right? Yeah, we were in two finals and I think like... Well, she was there. Wolfsburg has won one in 2013, or right? Yes, but it was before Great my time. time. Mm -hmm. So I think in my time we were twice in the in the finals and it's like we always were against uh, Lyon in the finals and I think you always you can lose against Lyon. It's like... Um, mm -hmm. I think my personal uh, goal was always to get in the final because that's an experience that is True. awesome so and i always try to really enjoy it okay we always lose against leon that was yeah kind of frustrating but <laughs> yeah i think yeah all in all it's like you can lose a final against leon it's it's okay okay which that propels us after your time of wolfsburg which ended quite recently into madrid mm -hmm. So why Madrid and why now at 31 did you decide to come to the, I think one of the greatest teams in Europe, but mm -hmm. personal opinion. Um, yeah, I felt like a little bit, uh, I needed something new. I was kind of a little bit in a situation in Wolfsburg that I don't feel so well. So um, then this opportunity comes 
around and um, I had made a really quick decision and it How was... quick was that decision made? Oh, let's say quick <laughs> Under two weeks Under two weeks I would say, yeah <laughs> So Coco loco <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. It was a great opportunity, and uh, it was always a dream for me to play in a in a different country to uh, learn about a new um, country, new mentality, the new language, culture, culture, yeah. culture whatever. So um, yeah, I felt ready to make the step. Okay, what are the ambitions of the club? Uh, and with that, like, sorry, with that. Um, what do you how with the ambitions of the club? How do you also see that going in the next five years of the Spanish league yeah. in general? Okay, um, I think the ambitions of the club is clear. We are right this year. We are to come, and we want to stay in the league. At the moment, we struggle a little bit, but we have to find our team a little bit. So, yeah. German honesty, folks. Yeah, it's one of a kind. <laughs> let me tell you personally. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so I think yeah, we want to stay this year and next year. It's it's. Um, transition years you know we want to stay in the league and then I think um, in three or four years I'm, I'm quite sure we will find Real Madrid in the Champions League I'm gonna call it by the end of next year they won't be good enough to be in the Champions League for 2021 mm -hmm. that's my then. <laughs> that's my gut feeling yeah. here um, okay how do you how do you think the Spanish League is different in the German League yeah I think the, the Spanish way to play football is a little bit different. Um, I'm still adapting, I would say. But um, yeah, I'm also kind of impressed from some things. It's like uh, the facilities here in Madrid, of course, are great, but also in, in the other teams we played away, they were really good. And um, yeah, I think they are really. They want to. They fight. They uh, keep fighting on the pitch. They want to play offensive. So it's like kind of. Yeah, it's a different way to play soccer, but uh, I'm kind of impressed with the league also. I went to CF Madrid versus Barcelona, and I have to say, like the crowd was, uh, in my opinion, a lot more involved than normal German league games for teams. Okay, it was Barcelona, but for, even for Madrid, it was quite a packed stadium. It's a bit smaller. Yeah, yeah. it's also the mentality. They live soccer here, you know. That's they true. just play it. They live it here. Favorite place to hang out in Madrid, so far. So far, I'm just here for five weeks so it's kind of uh, you've only been here five weeks yeah it's kind of uh, maybe six now mm -hmm. uh, difficult but uh, last weekend Sarah Björk was here and we <laughs> uh, went to this nice food place uh, Paracheca and <laughs> was it wrong? Paracheca, Paracheca sorry <laughs> and yeah we walked there to a nice bar it was it was a nice place good food so I really liked this Germany, how did it feel to make your debut, debut, <laughs> sorry, how did, how did it feel to make your debut, 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 I'm not taking the English from you, no offense, how did it feel to make your debut for Germany, <laughs> okay, how um, did it feel to make your debut for Germany, okay, how I'll did say you, my first game, how did, national team. how did you find out you had been called up? Uh, I actually get really old school a letter. That's crazy to me. Yeah. Okay. A letter that says, "Hey, uh, the German coach just invited you for the first." What year was this? It's ooh, 2006. 2006. Got a letter. Mm. Crazy. Okay. World Cup 2007. How was that experience giving you that you were part of the squad but did not play? Uh, for me it was, I was 18 years old and I mean, we had some great players in Germany and made the squad uh, the best 23 I think. I mean 18, that's a good player in Germany, it was like an overwhelming experience to uh, go to China and yeah, met in a tournament all these World Cup players and train five weeks with Did with you Germany. eat anything then that was like very... Uh, it was a challenge. I think after after 2007 and 2008, both tournaments were in China. China mm -hmm. uh, we hired a cook or a chef in, for a national team. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, or Euros 2009. How did it feel to win your first trophy, or I guess your second, mm -hmm. with your country? Yeah, that was a really special tournament for me because it was um, I was a starting eleven player, and yeah, 
I was in a really good shape and I had so much fun on the pitch and um, the team was great, we won and yeah, it was a great experience. Okay, Olympics, gold and bronze medal. Mm -hmm. Just put this on here. Um, <laughs> what was the secret behind the German success during this period? Was the Olympics the main target or was it, or was it a nice bonus? Um, I think we were so successful because, um, yeah, we were quite good educated. Uh, we had a good tactical education to this time and we had this mentality, you know, this winner mentality. Maybe just put it on. Uh, we had great players and yeah, I think it was a great decad and it's like, this was always a dream from all German players, I think. Um, I remember actually that uh, 2008 in China, we won the third bronze, uh, the bronze. And I know every older or all older player were kind of disappointed. And I remember um, I looked at Mel Beringer and me. What we, a phenomenal player. You know, we always played together, kindish. Mm -hmm. And then we were, we were so crazy happy to win the bronze medal. But I think in the German mentality, exactly, uh, especially when you play longer, you always want to be the best, the first and whatever. You think that's just German? No, it's like... We also have yeah. this, <laughs> this to ourselves, you know, we always, uh, yeah. How difficult was the decision to retire, coming on the opposite end of this? Mm. Just take this off. Um, of course, I think for every... How honest can we get? <laughs> of course, for every athlete after, I think, 14 years national team, mm. uh, it's uh, quite not an easy decision, because it's a big part of your life. You travel a lot wherever, and... Um, have great experience, met great people, but um, yeah, I felt like it was time for me to um, close this chapter and um, open a new one maybe. So um, as I made the decision, it was quite easy and um, I'm looking back on my time at the national team and I'm so proud and so honored that I had, um, yeah, the possibility to play with great players together, to make so many experiences and have such a great, uh, successful time. So at the end, I'm looking back uh, on this year and uh, the beginning I retired and I think it's like, um, I don't regret it. I think I made everything right. Amen. Um, <laughs> this is a good question. Has winning ever become so normal for you that it is no longer satisfying? Um, Let's say not normal, but um, I Expected. like to win. I like to win, and, or I hate losing. Let's say this: I hate losing, so um, it's never come quite of normal. But I have to say, it's like also a reason uh, why I made this step now here to Madrid, because it's like, um, and I don't mean this in a yeah, so, how do you say, cocky way. But I won really everything in Germany and... Um, in the world, to be fair. Not in the so world, great. yeah, okay. And um, I w wanted to have a new experience. And this is here in Madrid, is kind of uh, building up something. And I'm, yeah, I'm really excited about this, to be a part of something new. And I like this, that uh, we go on the pitch every Sunday and it's not clear if we will get a point, if we will lose, or if we get yeah, some goals against us. And yeah, I really like this. Honesty. I really like this uh, challenge, to be fair. Um, who do you think is the worst loser between you, Zada, and P? Vanilla Harder. Vanilla Harder. And I would say Sarah and me were on the same level. Really close behind P, but P. Sorry, P. Um, what are your plans for when you're finished playing? Um, I think I want to stay in the sport business. Um, mm -hmm. I actually started, or some month ago, I started my master's in sport business. So because I have this passion for sport and I wanna spend my life um, or my second career also in the sport business. So um, yeah, it don't have to be soccer or football. Of course, um, I will always be passionate about this, but um, I'm, I love sports in general. Maybe go back to gymnastics. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> okay, the last question, very good one again. Um, you won league titles, cups, Euros, World Cups, Olympics. 
I'm good then. If you replayed, you replayed your whole career and could only win one of these trophies, mm. which one would it be and why? And I will be nice and give you one with your country and one with the league for oh. domestic. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, yeah, this is hard because uh, for some reasons every title has something special. You know, it's not that it's getting boring, but yeah, every title has something special. But if I have to choose, I would you have to choose. I will. Oh, I would never replace the Champions League final 2010. First and always in history. Mm. Exactly. It was an amazing game, and yeah, my first and only Champions League title. And in yes. the national team, in the national team, I would say it is still the gold medal. I think because as a as a, as an athlete, you dream of being a part of this. Um, experience yeah after this experience and you met so many amazing people and then at the end you have this ceremony and i know i think um it's one of the moments i teared up to getting um to hear the hymn uh, the hymne and um, national anthem the national anthem sorry you call it what hymne hmm. and it was it was such an overwhelming feeling so i i don't want to miss this hmm. there you have it folks um yeah, I think the most incredible part about uh, Babette is that if you met her on the street, you would never know that she is one of the most um, decorated or decorative athletes, not only in Germany, but in the world. So whatever your parents did in good old little Oshat, <laughs> it worked. Cheers and um, danke schön, gracias for dein Zeit. You're welcome. Sure. Okay, adieu. Thank mm -hmm. you.